What's shaking, everybody? It's your boy, King of the Golden State, coming at you with an artist spotlight video. Just a showcase of a certain artist I like to showcase on. Just almost like what I did with uh, Jim Lee only, I want to say about a month ago? A little over a month ago. This time around, I'm doing a uh, spotlight spotlit around Brian Bolin. And um, what is there to say about this guy? Uh, fantastic cover artist. Uh 67 years old been still still you know i'm not sure if he's still drawing covers anymore i haven't seen anything from him lately but he has been like i would say e even currently he's like to the current days he's he's done a lot of great covers and he's probably one of the best cover artists you've probably seen ever you know i mean i'm not going to compare him to anybody else but um if there is a cover artist you could think of brian bolin is one of your top 10 on your list Starting with this one right here. Um, got this uh, Wonder Woman number 78 with uh, Wonder Woman, The Flash. He did a long run. Uh, he didn't do... He, well, I'd say he did a semi-long run of uh, of uh, Wonder Woman. And he's done stuff long before that. But some of the stuff that stuck out for him was definitely Wonder Woman. So stuff like this I want to showcase. Like Wonder Woman 78. Wonder Woman 97. And if you can see, I mean, like, the cool thing about his artwork compared to others is, like, he makes, like, a Wonder Woman look really lifelike, you know? I mean, still, it's, you know, it's a comic book, but still, the cool thing about it is he makes a character like Wonder Woman or any other character he's drawing look really lifelike. Like, for example, with the expression. So, you look at, say, Wonder Woman with this old Joker look on her face. It's pretty cool. So, I've always liked that. always liked the... Uh, like this, uh, I'm, I'm sure some people aren't very big fans of it, but the Zero Hour of uh, Wonder Woman. I mean, don't get me wrong. Zero Hour was not the greatest, like, like series at all, but some good things came out of it. So good, Some good things came out of it, like the Wonder Woman Zero, which I thought was really cool. You know, this is really an awesome cover. But this cover is not as good as this cover. Wonder Woman 72. And like I said, uh, you got this cover and that cover. It's hard to compare. They're both great covers. You know, but uh, the thing is, uh, you know, that this cover is more color, like computer color based. Because like around, like say the mid 90s, you know, when Image came out, their big thing was about, you know, computer coloring. And this is more of a flat color, but this is still a great cover. It's definitely what I would consider iconic. And, you know, Brian Boland did a wonderful, wonderful job on both covers, really. Um, he wasn't involved in the colors, as far as I know, but he did a wonderful, wonderful job. Like I said, the Wonder Woman run by Brian Boland, like, say what you want to say about the interiors. It's the, it's the covers that he does are really awesome. Really awesome. So, really dug that. He's really known for doing a lot of DC stuff, guys. So, he's always done stuff like, uh, you know... He'll do small runs here and there, but he was definitely known for his Wonder Woman stuff. But he also did a couple of issues of The Flash, which I thought was really kick-ass. Really dug that. Um, yeah. So there's stuff like that. I don't have many Flash covers to show, but that one, this one, this particular issue kind of stuck out to me. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, he, he was mainly DC, you know, centric on his, on his titles. Like, he did a cover swipe of... Uh, the first appearance of um, Batgirl. And he did it for Go Batman Gotham Knights. And is really, I love this cover. I mean, despite that it wasn't him originally. Uh, it's, the name escapes me. I think it's Carmine Infantino who did it originally. But, uh, yeah. I mean, he really still does great covers. A lot, a lot of stuff for DC. Especially this one. This one I really dug. Like, this one was, uh, yeah, Batman Gotham Knights. Uh... And he puts a lot of, like, not only he makes his characters look lifelike, he put a lot of detail into the artwork. So, I mean, like, I'm not even sure how long he would have taken for something like this. But, you know, if I had to draw it, it would take me freaking weeks. You know, so, I mean, I thought, you know, like, I always loved the stuff that he does for DC. And he, he does a lot of covers for DC. Um, and that's the thing he really stuck with. Um, and, of course... 
when it comes to Batman, who could forget um, his amazing work? Not only just a cover, but the interior for Batman The Killing Joke. And, you know, I mean, it, it's definitely a treat when you have an artist like Brian Bullen not only do the cover, but do the interior of the book, especially when it's written by Alan Moore. And he did an amazing job on this. So if you guys haven't, it, like, if you're new to collecting comics, if there's a top 10 group of comics, I say, for you to get for, for your introductory plan, so to speak, pick up Batman and Killing Joke. I don't care what kind of, you know, if it's in first print or second print or even just like a special edition of some sort, pick it up. It's worth it for you to read that. So, I mean, like, he's always done that. Um, definitely done uh, a couple of these variants, which I love. I mean, it's got a little personality to it. There's a Zatanna, which only lasted, like, 16 issues, but he did, like, five or six issues, and they were, like, one in ten um, um, variants, you know? So I was fortunate to get this one when it first came out, and, uh, you know, I just love the cover. It's really cool. I kind of wish this title went longer because, I mean, who knows? I mean, if it did with well, more Brian Bolin covers, he he probably would have killed it. But it's a really, you know, really beautiful cover. Uh, and and other, other covers he did, um, not just for DC, but, like, earlier in his career, he did stuff like Judge Dredd. And, you know, like I said, it's all about detail for him. He does a really good job putting out detail for a title or a cover you know, such as Judge Shred. So, dug that. Also, did this one as well, which I really love. This is a uh, Prince cover. You know, it's a Prince comic book. It's more, I mean, it's, it's by Piranha Music, which I think is like a, um, is like an offshoot of DC. I'm not sure. He's a big DC guy, so, you know, I just had to get this cover, and I thought it was really cool. I mean, it's like I said, the artwork he does, you know, is very lifelike looking, so... Especially when you see it in the eyes and such, but it's really cool. Um, but again, like I said, um, he didn't always do DC. I mean, he did flirt with Marvel for a little bit. Um, let me see. He did a uh, he did a She Hulk cover, which he didn't finish. I don't have the guts to show you that cover because it's terrible. Um, it was a I want to say She Hulk fourteen, sensational She Hulk. It was back when John Byrne started the series. It was an earlier series back in the nineties. And it's done by him and also Mark Texiera, which who is known for doing uh, artwork for Ghost Rider and Union from Wildstorm. And it, the two just didn't mesh as far as the artwork goes. I don't know if they had personality clashes or anything like that. I just know is all I know is when I saw the cover for She Hulk, Sensational She Hulk, I think it's fourteen. The artwork just didn't mesh right. So like uh, he's done that. He also did um, a Howard the Duck cover for the first series for Howard the Duck 33. And that was it. But also, the one thing that caught my eye when I was researching Brian Bowen was he also did another one for Marvel. And and if here's the thing. If he did this title with cover after cover, like, like, a, like, like he did for like DC, I'm sure this title was stuck around. And it's this one. Hellstorm, Prince of Lies. I'm not a Hellstorm fan. Let's just put it like that. I don't care about Hellstorm at all. But this cover was done by Brian Bolin on his own. This was no, there's no outside inking or anything like that. This cover just stares into your soul. It's so goddamn good that I just thought, man, this is amazing. I got this like from eBay for like three bucks and I didn't even know at all that this came out, you know, you know, at all. I didn't know, I didn't know this book existed. And just to see this was really, really cool. And, you know, I just had it, like, like I said, I probably won't even read this, but like, it's completely black. If you look deep enough here, you can see like a stormtrooper's face. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's a really badass cover. And I really, Thought, I really think, and this is the only cover, he only did like three covers from, from Marvel, you know, and I think he said he had like a phobia of doing Marvel covers. I don't know if he was joking or whatever, but if he stuck around with Marvel, he probably could have made a title like Hellstorm go to distance, probably. 
or at least go longer than I think 20 issues. But yeah, there was that. And you know, he did uh, one of my favorite, he did the cover to one of my first trades I ever got when I was a kid. The greatest Joker stories ever told. This is, this, I remember getting this trade when I, from my uh, cousin. My cousin had like a couple of trade paperbacks of like the greatest Batman stories ever told. And the other one he had was the greatest Joker stories ever told. This one was done by Brian Bolin. I mean, you just got to like the personality and the look of this whole cover, you know. It's really, it's kind of got a David Bowie type of Joker look to himself, but it's really badass. And, uh. I know he's done other stuff like Animal Man and, and Invisibles, but there's only just a few that just stick out to me. So I'm sure some people, you know, have that same feeling with Brian Bolin as well. So I'm not going to tag many people on this because sometimes I tag people and no one really does it. I mean, I, I know like one one or two people did, and I do appreciate you doing, for doing that, but I could just randomly throw out names. Ah, oh, God. Let's see, top of my head. I'm 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 drawing a blank right now. Spidey fan. Uh Punisher Comics. And uh, let's do Biggie's. Biggie's comics, because Biggie's collects DC and you know, I'm sure he's got a few Brian Bowen comics, you know, covers that he's got hanging around. You know, if if you guys happen to have any of your favorite covers, feel free to share them. But that's about it, guys. I'm gonna uh, work on posting this video and try to Get some sleep. Other than that, thumbs up. Tell me what you think of the video. Hit the comment below. And also, if you haven't subscribed, start subscribing. I'm, I'm starting to see 500 subscribers getting close by, getting close to that point. So, no, I'm lying. I'm actually at 430 or 440. I don't know. I'm far away. But that's about it, guys. Uh, tell me what you think. You know, you know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll talk to you later. Peace.